Yeah, we can only hope. Andrew, joining us now in an exclusive interview is Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller. Uh, Governor Waller, thank you for joining us this morning. It's really a great time to have you because we had all that data last week. We had the jobs data and we had the PCE inflation data. I wonder if you've been thinking about it and how you react to, uh, to what's happening. Is it going along with your forecast? Yeah, thanks, Steve, for having me on. Yeah, that was a hell of a good day, week of data we got last week. Uh, and the key thing out of it is it's going to allow us to uh, proceed carefully, as Chair Powell said at Jackson Hole. Uh, there's nothing that is saying we need to do anything imminent anytime soon, so we can just sit there, wait for the data, see if things continue. Uh, the biggest thing is just inflation. We got two good reports in a row can wait and see what a third one looks like and see whether this low inflation is a trend or it was just an, out, uh, an outlier or a fluke. When you say low inflation, um, when I looked at some of the things that we know that the chair looks at, I know you do too, which is that uh, PCE core taking out housing, it actually went up. What about it made you feel comfortable? Well, uh, the thing that really drove it were non-market services and those things can be volatile they're not really a clear indication what market prices are so i typically you know don't like to throw things out but in general this time it it clearly was something that was a bit odd and we'll see if this continues meanwhile the unemployment rate went up is that a source of concern for you it was up by three tenths is this the beginning of a gathering weakness in the job market do you think well, the data last week clearly showed the job market is starting to soften, but the unemployment rate, if I remember correctly, last August was 3.7. So you're roughly where you were a year ago. So we're not seeing a big movement. And some of the increase was just an increase in labor force participation. As more people entered the labor market and are looking for jobs, jobs are getting a little tougher to find. It's not surprising the unemployment rate went up a couple of tenths. But again, it's really not much different than it was a year ago. Is all of this in line with an outlook that you have for a soft landing, or do you still see a threat of a recession to the U.S. economy? Well, the way the data is coming in, it's looking pretty good. But recessions often are caused by shocks that just come out of nowhere and hit the economy. So that, that can always happen, uh, and that's why they're shocks. We can't really predict them. But the way the data is coming in right now, it's looking, looking pretty good that uh, if we can keep inflation coming down, for the next few months, on trend at like two-tenths a month, we're in, we're in pretty good condition. So can you stop raising rates now, or do you, uh, do you still need to hike more? Well, we, that depends on the data. I mean, we have to wait and see if this inflation trend is continuing. We've been burned twice before. In 2021, we saw it coming down, and then it shot up. The end of 2022, we saw it coming down. That all got revised away. So I want to be very careful about saying we've kind of done the job in inflation until we see a couple of months continuing along this trajectory before I say we're done doing anything. But would you say the risks are now evenly balanced between doing too much by the Federal Reserve or doing too little? Yeah, I'd say there are more. Uh, I mean, I don't think one more hike would necessarily throw the economy into a recession if we did feel we needed to do one. Um, but at the same time, like I said, the job market is still pretty strong. I mean, these numbers are still near historic lows at 3.8% unemployment. So um, it's not obvious that, that we're in real danger of doing a lot of damage to the, um, the job market, even if we raise rates one more time. Chris, let's talk about the uh, issue of monetary policy lags. This is something that some folks have said is a big deal and it's uh, th th there's yet to come a wave of, of negative impact on the economy from the big shocks uh, of interest rate hikes you had. But you've had the opinion that the lags are here now, that, that in this economy, with a big increase of, of interest rates uh, the way the Fed did it, that there is not much of a lag to the economy. And that kind of puts you a little bit at odds with uh, Fed Chair Powell, who said uh, recently that... Uh, um, uh, there could be significant lags yet to come. Well, this is a, a tricky problem because there's never a, an exact number on when the lags tend to hit. And I think, as I gave a speech back in uh, July, that um, I think the lags are shorter. 
they're still there, but they're not like we don't have to wait two years for this stuff to start impacting on the economy. And we're seeing it now, as far as I'm concerned. You're starting to see the economy slow down. We're seeing inflation coming down. And it's really been just a little over a year that we've done a lot of large hikes. So I think we're already seeing the impact. The other thing that I people seem to have this idea that long and variable lags means there's this cliff effect, the, what I call the wily e. coyote moment where the economy's going long and then it just <laughs> collapses. That's not how these typical lags. Yeah. You know, they start having an effect, they build up, and then they eventually fade away. There's none of this cliff effect that everybody keeps talking about.